Welcome to Retro Upgrade. Today we'll be taking a look at this. This is a oscilloscope I bought recently. It's an extremely cheap one. This is a four channel scope with a lot of features on it for the price. It's about 220 euros shipped from AliExpress. I have never owned one, so this is my first scope. It's a Hanmatech DOS 1104. It has some really nice decent specs. It looks really nice. It's really thin and doesn't take up a lot of space on my desk. So that's perfect for me. It has some nice uh, feet that you can uh, set for inclined backwards or uh, standing straight. The specs are four channels, 110 megahertz, one giga samples per second. It has a seven inch screen. It has USB connectivity for the PC. Also, it's powered by USB, so it's isolated from the ground, so you can't kill yourself. It has video triggering and also PC connectivity, so you can export your scans. It comes with four leads, as you can see here, the USB power supply, the barrel jack to USB cable, the USB cable for connecting to the PC, and some extras for setting up your leads. It also comes with the software on a CD. The manual is decent enough. It's written in plain English and uh, decently written. You can actually read this. That's usually a problem. All the probes also come with the manuals, of course. The probes are normal probes. They are rated for 100 megahertz. They are a little under what the scope can do. It has a 1 and 10x selector it also has really nice alligator clips it's a standard bnc connection like all scope probes and uh, there's the specs 100 uh, megahertz and 6 megahertz if you run it at uh, 1x but uh, that's decent enough for beginning you can buy some better scope probes if you need to it has the small hook on the front. You can also take off the cap and use the tip as a, a poking <laughs> uh, scope probe. It's really useful actually. So it comes with some covers for the BNC connectors. I really like that so it, they don't get dirty. You will probably lose those plastic caps. It has the adjustment a screw right there you get small screwdrivers with the set so you can adjust it to the settings okay so let's take a look at the buttons it has a lot of buttons but it has a few annoyances it's a menu based system so it doesn't have a lot of knobs it, it still has a, quite a fair bit of knobs but uh, you're missing quite a few uh, let's say features you need to go into menus and set up so it's a little bit cumbersome compared to a professional scope i have used scopes before but i never owned one so this is my first one uh, you can uh, select the channels it has ma math functions it has different uh, measuring uh, things it also has a calibration port with a uh, waveform you can choose uh, you actually for the price this is probably the cheapest four channel scope you can get with a built-in screen uh, it's about 220 to 230 euros i got it a little cheaper because of the shipping reduction i get in canarias we have the connector right there for the power let's hook it up and check how it works because the it doesn't connect to ground you cannot fry this thing the start boot up time is quite decent uh, for a scope scopes usually take a while to boot up so it's about 13 seconds or so not too bad actually and uh, it for what you pay for of course you're missing quite a few uh, features and stuff from a let's say a rigel scope that cost about 10 times more so you need to calibrate your probes if you're using them at 10x 
So you can press the auto button and it tries to auto hook onto the signal you are using right there. So this is really nice actually because it's a one kilohertz signal and it really stable actually. I did uh, pre calibrate the scope probes so that's why I'm not doing it here. The resolution is quite good for being a cheap scope. 110 megahertz is good enough for most things for hobbyists. Uh, I picked this up because it also has video triggering for NTC, PAL and CCAM signals. So these for, for example, for video games and stuff, for old video games, this is perfect because I can actually check the output video signal and see if it's noisy or if it has some issues, maybe the sync is wrong. It can latch on to sync, even odd lines, front porch, back porch, it's perfect for my use case. But this is a fully featured scope, obviously, so it has everything you would expect. I am a little bit of a noob for scopes, so <laughs> excuse me for clicking around and checking stuff. This is the first use uh, on video. It's pretty responsive. It seems to be pretty well isolated as well. No noise pick up if you don't touch it. The buttons seem nice and uh, squishy and it gives some tactile feedback. It has uh, some different triggering, like I said. The video triggering is the most important one for me because I'm designing my own RGB boards. So I need to be able to check the output even or odd line number that one i really like if you have a specific problem on a specific line of your video signal you can actually check what's wrong so <laughs> that, that's uh, really interesting i didn't know it had that it also has edge triggering that's the normal trigger for rising and falling edge you also have a hold off so if you want to let it wait in between uh, for example if uh, the trigger signal is too fast you can actually just make it skip it okay so there are a few caveats with this uh, because it has all the functions behind buttons it's a little bit cumbersome to get some to some buttons and it has a few annoyances i noticed while while testing this thing for example if i want a single trigger shot i have to go into the menu every time to get it back to that state. It goes automatically back to automatic triggering. So it's a little bit of a pain, but there probably is a way to save a default setting somewhere. I still haven't gone through the entire thing completely because it has a lot of settings and stuff. Uh, the button to the right there is a trigger setting. Uh, so you can set the trigger level and also click to activate it. You have math functions. That's also one of the main selling points for me because I need to be able to subtract one signal from another. That's why I chose a four channel scope because R, G, B and sync. <laughs> That's the four lines I usually check on video games and uh, when I'm designing stuff. It has uh, a lot of different uh, settings and stuff. So. I like I said I'm not a pro. This is a review from a noob <laughs> for oscilloscopes. I know how to use this device. I just can't really explain how it works properly for people. It has a bit of a learning curve to adding functions and stuff, but when you get used to it, it's just fine. Before we continue, I'd like to thank our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers high quality PCBs, 3D printing, metal sheet fabrication, CNC milling, and injection molding, all at incredibly affordable prices. You can get 10 PCBs for just $5. They also have a great community page for sharing projects and connecting with other makers. Check them out at PCBWay.com. Thanks PCB Way for sponsoring my video. Now let's get back to it. Okay, here I'm checking the utilities button. It has utilities, functions, auto set, and it has quite a few settings. 
you can get lost in the settings mostly but when you get the hang of it uh, you'll probably fly through this really fast i'm still learning uh, i want to, to be able to use this uh, here are all the measurements you can add to the view so you have them already up there is really many of them <laughs> so yeah i didn't have the chance to click around too much here but there is a lot of them so i thought you clicked on the multi-purpose button uh, on the top left to get it to add whatever measurement you want but that's not the case you have a little small add button on the right side of the menu so you click add there then you use the spinny thing <laughs> or the multi-purpose spin thing to add a function so it's like i said it's not the best thought out scope it's a little bit uh, let's say badly designed in some cases but that of course the cost helps a lot to ignore that so let's see so you press add choose the channel first and press add and then you spin it around uh, the multi-purpose wheel and choose another measurement let's say duty cycle and you can press the add button again to the right and you add it to the screen like you can see here and that makes it a lot easier to keep uh, exactly what you want on the screen so you can add and remove different ones so that's perfect for me especially uh, for different things if you want to know exactly do the duty cycle of a pwm signal for a, mo a electro electric motor if you want to do phasing stuff for example three phase power it also has a lot of stuff i don't know what it is <laughs> so uh, bear with me but uh, i'm going to learn how, how to use most of the functions because i like i said i never owned one I have used some in school and uh, Richard lent me one. There is a split view. I really like this. So you can zoom in practically uh, and see, see parts of the signal a little de more detailed. That's really good for I squared C and for finding issues with your signal. It also has the uh, obviously the voltage divisions uh, you can I think it's up to 50 volts per division and it has uh, uh, also the single trigger trigger mode that's uh, quite useful I'll show a, a small uh, example of that in a in a moment now but uh, this uh, device is not for everyone obviously uh, most of this you can do with a single channel scope multimeter in some cases but if you're going to design electronics i highly recommend a oscilloscope there is no reason not to get one nowadays before when i was younger i really wanted one uh, when i started out with electronics but they were like maybe two to three grand at the cheap end and uh, that's way over a uh, bud budget uh, hobby price point but now that they are down to the hundreds of euros it's still a lot of money don't get me wrong uh, it has x y mode as well yeah <laughs> so i don't miss that uh, it's still a lot of money but it's worth the investment now because if you're going to let's say be doing arduino stuff or uh, ESPs or programming any microcontroller or making your own electronics especially if you're working with analog electronics this is a must pretty much you will go nuts trying to find the issues this is also very very useful to troubleshoot and repair electronics obviously because you can see trigger signals you can see signals coming from coming in from and to uh, let's say a BIOS chip on a motherboard. Okay, I'm setting up a small test here. So I wanted to show single trigger mode and show the bounds of a button. So 
Debouncing is a thing you need to do on Arduinos, for example, if you hook up a push button, because the signal jumps around. It's not blatantly obvious why, because it should be on and off. But actually there is a mechanical springiness to the connect contact and it doesn't contact immediately. As you can see here, it's insanely sensitive. If you push it really fast, you get a, b a bounce that goes up and down over the voltage even. So it sparks internally. This also depends on the button. If you use low quality buttons, this happens a lot more. You can get a really nasty bounce and uh, that triggers the button press multiple times. But if you get a better quality button, they usually have some pr mechanical prevention from bouncing around when you click them. And that's really good. See, the, this is less pronounced. I have it from 5 volts to ground when I push the button, by the way. That's why it goes down and not up. But even these buttons that are somewhat good uh, have a, uh, some bounce. But you can see I have to fiddle with the settings every time I want to take a single trigger shot because every time I push the run stop button to start the scope scanning again, it uh, goes back. Okay, let's install the software. Comes on a CD. I put it on a Google Drive for anyone that has issues reading the CD. I have some issues at the beginning to read the CDs. If you need it, just leave me a comment and I'll send you the link. Uh, so the Handmatic software, I didn't find it too useful. It comes with drivers, so that, that's good, I guess. Uh, it has Unfortunately, a USB 2 interconnect, so it's extremely slow to update. As you can see here, it's like a slideshow. It's still useful because you can send over, let's say, you scan for 20 seconds and then send it over to the computer to analyze it. So you see it more comfortably. You don't need to sit on the oscilloscope seven inch screen. You can test it out. So the pros and cons for this is the pros are it's isolated, so you can't kill yourself while uh, using it. It's uh, really cheap. I paid 174 euros. It has four channels for the price. It's quick and it, the, it has video triggering for my part. Uh, cons, poor controls, slow USB, missing features f compared to a really expensive scope, but that's normal. They use a barrel jack instead of a USB-C connector. And the packaging was a little bit iffy. You can see on the video here, I'm opening the package for the first time. It came dented on one side. Fortunately, the scope wasn't damaged, but it could use a little more padding inside. It has some of these uh, plastic padding things on the sides. Overall, this is a really good buy if you need one. This is probably the best scope, four channel scope you can get for the price. Thank you for watching until the end. Hopefully this was useful. I'm not used to doing review videos. This will probably help someone, I hope. Okay, have a nice one. See you next time. Bye.